for me, the in-person experience is always the most important because this is literally where I live. That is a few blocks away from my front door, a few blocks away from my children's school, where I went to school. I am surrounded by my neighbors and my community. Close to Home Studio presents Resilient Small Businesses, Brooklyn Edition, with me, Mo Mullen. A series of conversations with extraordinary, resilient entrepreneurs sharing what they've learned and how they've adapted this past year. Join me for insights and inspiration as we uncover how to thrive in this increasingly unpredictable world. I believe the future is local, and I hope this series will help you connect more deeply to your place and understand what it truly means to live close to home. Hello, welcome. I am delighted to be here with Emma Straub, the co-owner of the neighborhood well-loved Books Are Magic. I'm so excited to jump in. Emma, welcome. Thanks for having me. So take me back to March 2020. What was going on during that time? A whole lot of confusion, fear, panic. You know, in some ways it was no different for us than for everyone across the country. And in other ways, um, there was more sort of pressure because it wasn't just, we weren't just thinking, oh my God, how do we, you know, homeschool our kids all of a sudden? It was how do we make sure that we keep our staff safe and how do we keep the bookstore running? So it was a lot of uh, making a lot of decisions really quickly and um, just starting a a journey of flexibility, I would say. And Mike, your co-owner and husband, was actually working 12-hour days, actually picking up your employees and taking them to, to books or magic, right. As part of an effort to keep everybody safe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was at first, the only people who were coming in were people who could either walk or ride their bikes. Um, but you know, it was March (laughs) which in New York city is not always the most lovely time to ride a bike. There was a, like a small crew of just beautiful, dedicated booksellers who felt okay coming in, um, you know, and they were sort of spaced out in the store. Everybody had their own little zone. And Mike was the uh, the bus driver. And I remember you saying that he felt really strongly about the importance of, of keeping the shop open and not only keeping everyone safe, but also keeping it open and keeping kind of business moving as much as, as possible. What, do you, what was driving that? I think he just wanted to make sure that we were there for everyone. Keep all of our employees employed, first of all, but also that that everyone who was suddenly stuck at home and terrified, he really wanted to be the place that our neighbors could depend on. Speaking of being a place that the neighborhood could count on, I had the pleasure of talking to a handful of your customers (laughs) <laughs> and I wanted to just hear, in addition to my love of books or magic, I wanted to hear other people articulate their love of books and magic. And this quote, um, I think, particularly captures what you're talking about. After Book Court closed its doors, I was feeling sad that maybe the days of the intimate, beautifully curated, fun for kids, filled with neighbors, bookstore in my increasingly pricey neighborhood were over. So when Books or Magic opened... And it was clear that all the members of my family of very different tastes and ages had found a new and cozy home. I was thrilled. We love them. (laughs) And thanks for having changing tables in the bathroom and never (laughs) making parents feel bad while book browsing with kiddos. That, that is so nice. That is so nice. And you know what, the changing table, that was one of the, that was one of the most important things to me was that, we make it as easy as possible. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how the community rallied and supported you guys during the It was incredible. I mean, before the pandemic, I would say we would, I mean, we had a website, we had a fully functioning website, you know, we would ship things out, but it was, I would say maybe five or 10 orders a day, not much. It was a tiny portion of our daily business. And then in March, April, <laughs> May, June, July, it was maybe three or 400 a day. 
I mean, it was, so, it was all so complicated, you know, cause it wasn't like, oh, I would like to order this one book. It was like, I would like to order these six books. You know, these ones you have on your shelves, these ones we have to special order in. Um, this t-shirt, this tote bag, you know, it was just, it was, a, it was a, a lot. And so the in-store team really figured out how to, how to streamline it. Big thing about this year is that really every single person on staff, everyone on staff has had to learn how to do their job in a completely different way. I think one of the other things that a lot of small business owners would say, and we've talked a little bit about, is that this year, while it was extraordinarily difficult and complicated Mm -hmm. and hard, it also gave you a chance to really understand the essence of what makes books are magic. And as we're now starting to kind of begin to come out of the pandemic, I'm wondering what aspects of books are magic that are its essence that you know you need to keep and what parts of it are going to kind of stay changed or stay adapted in some way you know i think we've we've really thought a lot about exactly what we are best at and what we really care about and um and trying trying to stay really as close to that as we can as we navigate everything else the only real training in terms of running a retail establishment that we had was that Mike and I for about a decade made merch and t-shirts and things for our friend's band. And we would go on tour with them, the Magnetic Field, and we would sell their merch in the lobby of their shows. And we were so good at it because Mike was really organized and he would count everything and he would order everything and he would make sure all the boxes showed up at the right places. And I would remember everybody's name and be friendly and take everybody's picture and like uh, the tour blog and all that stuff. Um, and that's still, that's still how it works. It's just on a bigger scale now and, and in one place. That makes perfect sense. I mean, those are the two core ingredients to a small, to what makes a small business magic, which is people feel seen when they're there, they come in, you know, their name, you have a connection to them. They feel connected to the space, to the team, to each other. And then you have the operation side of it, which is like, do we actually have enough inventory? Who's counted the inventory? (laughs) How much does the inventory cost? One of the questions that I have long been fascinated with is this question of, can you scale local? So can you take the essence of something that is place-based and special and authentic and has a real connection to the place and to the people? And can you in a way that still has meaning and matters, can you, can you grow it? And what does that look like? And I think that you, you, you guys and books are magic did a, a beautiful job of kind of in some ways scaling local during the pandemic. Was that part of what you were trying to do? Everyone. I mean, I know my shopping habits have changed. I think all of our shopping habits have changed. And so what I wanted to make sure of was that for all the people who live in neighborhoods or towns or cities that don't have a bookstore around the corner, that they could look at our stuff, look at our Instagram, our website, our staff pics, all that stuff, visit our events online. And while scaling local is almost an oxymoron, what I love about what you guys have done is for people who just don't have access to bookstores in much smaller places or more rural places, um, you guys feel like a bookstore home to them. So looking back on the year, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would do differently? I I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's anything I would do differently, but I sure wouldn't want to do it again. Such a stressful time and scary for, for all of us, you know, for, for me and my husband, for all of our employees who are coming into the store. It is not a small thing what they have done. If you were going to give some advice to other small business owners, what advice would you want to give them? It'll be four years on May 1st. Um, and I still feel so new to it. And so I hesitate to give advice because I think that <laughs> I think that most small business owners know a lot more about business than I do. But I've been reading and learning. And I guess what I am trying to really focus on is to understand our strengths 
and to stay as close as we can to our mission and to keep learning. You know, I what we've done in the past few months is do more trainings, you know, not, not just internal trainings on our point of sale system or whatever, but bystander training. We did some, you know, difficult customer interactions training. My husband is doing a, a you know, a more long-term leadership training. Um, we just, we, we want to, we want to be the best workplace we can be because we came in with with zero experience and so we made a lot of mistakes but we didn't know what to avoid and and so i think we had to make some mistakes in order to know what we needed to learn so how do you think about the balance of the digital online aspect of your business and the in-person experience of the store the kind of bricks and mortar aspect of the store. How do you think about those two aspects of the business and where you want to keep putting resources and what you want to focus on? For me, the in-person experience is always the most important. It's always the most important because this is literally where I live. That is a few blocks away from my front door, a few blocks away from my children's school and where I went to school. So it's you know, so in the bookstore on any given day, I am surrounded by my neighbors and my community. You know, it's not, it's not some other community (laughs) that I just sort of landed in and thought, well, this looks like a great place to have a bookstore. You know, it is, um, it is really my home. That is always the most important thing that, that there is a, a, a front door that people can open and come in and feel welcome and comfortable. And when I feel stressed out and overwhelmed by the amount of work it is and the pressure and the responsibility, that is what makes me feel better about it. Just being on the floor at the bookstore, talking to a baby about how they're eating a sock. You know what I mean? Like talking to someone about a book I just read or, you know, talking to a classmate of, one of my kids who just happens to be in there with their parents, you know, that all that stuff, that is, that is the number one thing to me. And the pandemic has really um, sort of driven home for me that, that like, that is really the number one thing. Um, The other stuff is also important, but it's not important in the way, I mean, in some ways it's, it's, you know, a, huge importance because we're selling more books online and we're, you know, our community is larger, but in terms of the decisions that we're making on a daily basis, it's, it has much more to do with, with the actual physical space. Now, I would say our, our sort of attention has been refocused um, in a nice way. Emma, thank you so much. This is an absolute pleasure. Books are magic has, is one of the things in Brooklyn that makes me feel at home. Oh, thank you. And I know that is true for many, many, many neighbors. So <laughs> thank you for the time and your perseverance and grit over the over the last year. Um, I, am, I am delighted to be spending more time back in the bookstore again. Thank you. Thanks, Mo.